Hello everyone, I'm Bolt Matrix, and today we're taking a look at the Explosive Lion King from Season 3 of Dragon Force. I picked this figure up and his brethren over at SirToys.com. We have the figure in its lion mode right now. The directions, the directions are a little weird in the fact that when I throw them into Google Translate, they don't exactly give me a precise translation. Explosive Red Lion King is the closest that the program has been able to give me for the name of this. But according to Sir Toys, it is just Dragon Force Red. So yeah, the coloring on the figure is excellent, but the plastic feels, a l it's not that it feels cheap, it feels super dense. It's a very strange feeling plastic, and I'm not sure we have anything in the U.S. that feels similar. It is just a very different feeling from the figures that we get here in the U.S. Not a bad thing, but different. I really like this beast mode. I think it works well. It does have a very Cheetor-esque transformation. If you've already guessed that, kudos to you then. The only issue I have with the figure in this mode is the fact that it doesn't want to stay together all that well in the chest. There is a clip here that's supposed to, you know, peg it into place. It just flat out doesn't work. So I pick it up. If you pick it up by the chest, the entire rear section of the beast mode flips down. The other thing that I really don't like is the robot head. The top of the main obviously has a giant robot head sticking off of it. The directions say that you're supposed to be able to fold the head down and fold it behind the mane fully. That's not physically possible. Even if you pull the face of the lion out all the way, there is this large circular peg or plug that gets in the way of the robot face. So it just smacks right up against it. If this plug was much shallower or could be flipped away, then the robot head could fold up easily. Now you just saw that I actually pulled the lion face out. Uh, yeah, I did, because every time I pick it up, it pushes the lion face back in. The lion mouth is poseable. It does open and close. There's plenty of posability here in the shoulders and in the arms, which, haha, <laughs> yeah, this definitely is a Cheetor transformation. Now, one thing I do have wrong here is the shoulder armor is not placed correctly. I didn't catch that at first. The shoulder can ratchet around like so and then you're supposed to be able to drop the shoulder armor into place much lower on the body. And what that does is it actually gives you the ability to raise up the lion face a little bit better and pose the arms ever slightly better. Now, ever because there is some clearance issues with some of the joints, Ah, things just have a tendency to move around. Man, I really wish that one peg actually worked instead of just kind of sitting there. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but the lion mode just doesn't hold together all that well, which is a shame, honestly. All right, transformation into robot mode is pretty darn easy. First, remove the tail weapon like that and put that off to the side, then come into the center of the beast and unpeg and remove the thruster pack, which is actually a lot harder to do than you might think because there are multiple... Uh, uh, I'll have to do this off camera. I don't want to break it. Now, the reason that was so hard is because there is a blue connector and a peg. The peg is a little bit too big for that peg hole and that connector is really tight. So it required much more force than I initially wanted to show you on camera. Next, slide off the shoulder pads and then rotate the shoulders 180 degrees. Flip up the robot head and push it back into the body. Grab the main lion head and push it in. And then what you could do, you can leave the robot head here or you can slide it forward, whichever you wish. We'll leave it forward for right now. Straighten out the legs and the knees. Flip the entire body down and push it down until it snaps into place. Stand the figure up. 
flip the feet around 180 degrees, like so. Now, you don't have to flip the feet around if you don't want to. There are toe, there is some toe articulation for the transformation. Swing the arms down, flip the fists around and fold up the paws, and then reattach some kibbles and bits. Shoulders slide back into place, and there are little tracks that you line them up with, and you can fold the thrusters up or wings up or down, whichever you want. Just be wary that if you've got one shoulder pad on, it becomes a very, very top heavy figure. And then finally, the thruster pack goes into the back of the figure, just beneath where the armpits are. And yes, this does affect posability a little bit. The figure we end up with is pretty darn good looking. It's also pretty darn big. I'll do a size comparison here in a second. His tail becomes a sword that pegs into the outer forearms. There is a little bit of posability unhappiness going on here, but overall I'm happy with the figure. I think it looks really cool. In robot mode, Lion is bigger than MP10 Prime and towers over everything in the Transformers toy line, except for the Commander class and Titans class figures. Head sculpt is very cool and kind of looks like it should be a train of some sort. Posability for the figure, as you saw, is pretty good. It is a little bit limited though. Head does not move at all. Shoulders can move forward and back, sort of. The back is completely negated almost by this thruster unit. And every time I try to move the shoulder forward and back, the, well, these things have a tendency to rise up and then if you move it too much, they pop off. And the joint is tight enough that sometimes when I go to move it, the entire shoulder joint will move. No torso articulation, ratchets forward, back, and then in and out, thigh swivel, double bend at the knee, and then those limited ball joints. The forward and back movement is great, but the side to side movement is almost nil. Overall, I'm very happy with Red Lion King here. Name aside, I'm not exactly sure what the name is. Even Google Translate doesn't seem to be able to give me the correct name. But overall, I'm happy with it. I think it's really cool and it feels really dense. The figure feels really good in the hand and is just big. You could get this figure and its four other teammates individually or you could get them as a unit. Links are down in the description. The video review for those other teammates are going to be coming very shortly, so please make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Please follow me over on Twitter and Patreon. As always, I have been Walt Matrix, and I'll catch you next time.